My name is Heron Tate, graduated Guelph University in 1995. So I'm here with some young bloods. This is uh, my, sorry, I'm getting you guys mixed up already. <laughs> Isaiah and Miles. So yeah, tell me a bit about uh, Black History Month, what it means to you. My parents made it a priority just to kind of make it as a time of reflection. Um, so it was always a big thing in my house where we, as a family, go through history, yeah. whether that be watching like different documentary series, TV shows, reading books, uh, such things like that. Within just like my general household with me and my sister, uh, my parents always wanted us to have like a foundation that we could grow up learning yeah. basically what the history was. Um, f like within my entire family, my aunt, my uncle, they also made it a priority within that household as well. So like all my cousins, we'd always, um, within February of the month, obviously, um, come together and like to have a time of reflection right. because it's, it's, it's important to understand the history because if there's no history, then there's no foundation. So if we don't know as kids what's going on or what this really means, then, then we have nothing to reflect on. Yeah. So uh, just being able to go back and with family, it's important because you can connect kind of on a deeper level. Right. And um, just prioritizing that within the month as a kid really helped me build like the foundation of myself right now. Awesome. And being able to spread different knowledge to different people for sure. Right, right. Yeah, and, and that's awesome because I'm glad you brought that up with family because uh, with my two girls, I got two girls, uh, Zoe and Hallie, shout out to you two. Um, one of the things, yeah, with February, I try to, uh, feed them little nuggets. Mm -hmm. I try to do it throughout the year, but February seems to be, you know, the focal point. Just more things are coming out, more events. Um, where we live in Oakville, found out that there's like a little museum, a Black History Museum mm -hmm. there. So I took them there, um, went through some of the programs that were there and tried to let them know that, hey, this is what some of the stuff that our people have gone through and the challenges that they may face growing up. Mm. Uh, I used to think, okay, you know, try to wa wonder what the best time it is to introduce them to, to that information, but I never think, it, I don't think it's too early. You, and you want to temper it. I, uh, for myself, I wanted to temper it just because I don't want to make them feel like they're limited with certain things. I want to expose them to as many different opportunities available to them. But then, uh, unfortunately, my youngest, seven, yeah, at seven years old, had somebody call her the N-word, drop the N-bomb on her. Wow. And I was like, are you kidding me? And that's devastating for, as a parent, to have your youngest at seven years old experiencing that and wondering why they're being called that. And it's a bit of ignorance, I think, on the kid's side. It's, like, it's indicative to me that probably that person's family, they use that word, uh, Surreptitious, surreptitiously in their family, just, mm. you know, and why are they using it in that regard? So uh, it's good to hear that your families, your, you guys share that. Um, any other things that you guys do within the family or uh, within that month, or I guess maybe even throughout the year that you'd say uh, to commemorate or to look into your history? Or I'll start with you. First yeah, um, I would say... Naughty. I, my first memory of it is probably when I was around maybe like seven or eight. Okay. I don't know if you guys know the the big TV series called Roots. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember my mom really wanted my sister and I to just sit down and watch. It's very long. It's very <laughs> oh, yeah. long. Oh, yeah. um, but I remember like that was the first time like my parents had us like actually like dive deeper into like what it actually means and just sort of go back to the history of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that documentary does a really good job of kind of telling the story that's easy to understand, like for kids too, because kids right. can watch it, which does a really good job of kind of explaining how the whole process went with slavery and like how, how um, black people became free at the end of it. And um, uh, just sort of being able to like start off that young and being able to have the resources to even like watch something like that and being able to have access to something like that really allowed me to like kind of propel myself forward into how I'm going to approach like the, the following Black History Month, like how am I going to teach myself something different like as I'm a kid, right? So I always, every single, every single year, 
I think it's important that I learn something new mm -hmm. that has to do with Black History Month so that I can continue to gain knowledge on yeah. the topic because I was born in 2001, so obviously I don't know what was before that. <laughs> so I need to like, you know, I need to keep up with what, what happened before I was here. Yeah. Because I don't know everything. And I think it's important that I can maintain that and keep learning something. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. How about yourself? Well, being 2001, I'm 2003, right? So <laughs> God damn, to, to me, he's kind of old. <laughs> 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 uh, but no, I think, I don't know. I, uh, <clears throat> it's been kind of hard to kind of understand and reflect on the history of being, I mean, from predominantly white communities, right? Yeah. Oakville, actually, like you, that's yeah. where I was from originally. Okay. And then Burlington uh, after that, it's kind of like you go into class and like you guys spoke about earlier, I'm yeah. quite, I'm the only person of color in there. Right. You know? And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, they talk about slavery or just black history as a whole, which is just slavery to them. And then right. at, at that point, it's like, okay, well, Correct. There's I mean, more there, to it. There's more to it, Definitely. exactly. Like when it comes to culture, obviously being Jamaican, there's yeah. there's that for me. Mm -hmm. um, obviously like Africans or, or anything like that, they yeah. also have their specific culture as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's been, it's kind of hard, but recently, especially my mom has been pushing a lot of documentaries, like, like you said, mm -hmm. um, whether it's sports related or just, you know, regular Black History Month or just anything of, yeah. of that sort, right? So um, like Miles is touching on, you know, trying to teach myself and also understand and just reflect at an older age right. on uh, what has happened previously. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I think. Mm -hmm. No, I, yeah, and I, th I think that's important, the whole reflection part of it, mm -hmm. definitely important. I, I was actually talking to Coach Shane about that, it's just when I was your guys' age, how many years ago, th that whole thing about reflecting on yourself, um, like I know, it was more focused on me rather than as a group. And it's more just trying to find yourself and understand yourself and then kind of expanding that knowledge. But, and again, with my girls, I bought this book, Little Heroes, and it goes through the uh, female, female heroes, uh, black women um, that challenged the status quo and what they did to progress. And again, it's just about providing that knowledge for them to say, hey, this is what you can achieve. This is how you can get, you know, you work a certain way, do things a certain way, you can get to uh, the point of, uh, well, success. Success is defined different ways, but you know, the traditional definition of success, you can, this, you can achieve these things. These mm -hmm. things are achievable if you set your mind to it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, I know you had mentioned about going into certain classes, being the only uh, person of color there. Um, any other, any instances here at Guelph or even outside of Guelph that uh, you look on and you, that you've kind of used as motivation or uh, any instances like that? Yeah, I went to a, so in high school, I went to a private school, Okay. which, uh, uh, Growing up, obviously, like going to, I went to a private school in Toronto. Um, there wasn't a lot of black kids there, just because yeah. it's a private school and like it's a, it's a little bit harder for, you know, to get access to something like that as a person of color. Right. Just because it's expensive. It's yeah. very expensive, first of all. And um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. So th in that school, I would say there were probably about maybe around 50 black kids out of like 1,700 students. Wow. Um, and we always made it a priority within Black History Month to talk about something important. Mm -hmm. We had a, a group that we established um, where we would go and reflect, and anybody was welcome. We had a lot of students from, of all races come and sit in on the meetings, which was, which was good because we had a lot of people with different perspectives come in and basically share what they think Black History means to them, right. which I, I think is extremely important because, is, yeah. you know, everybody's gonna have a different view on something. Even a white person might have something very different than a black person and they can learn from that. Sure. So I think it's important that when we establish different groups, especially here too, when we have certain conversations, that anybody's welcome so that we can all come together collectively and have a deep conversation on what it means to people specifically. Right. Right, so just learning that from high school, even transitioning here, uh, since I've been here, this has been an open locker room. Everybody has chats. We all talk. Um, we all have deep conversations when it matters, and we all care about each other. 
That's so good. everybody's open to learning. All, most of the environments I've been in, everybody's always open to learning and giving good. their own perspectives and views. And um, yeah, just having that, having access to that, I think is important too. Because especially being on a football team, it's important that everybody's on the same page yeah. and everybody understands everybody's viewpoints. For sure, right? for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, motivation for me is just kind of like we touched on it, is just being successful. Yeah. And for me, that's obviously football is an aspect of that, but on top of that, you know, make sure my grades were there for the university. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the big things that my mom was pushing oh, on yeah. me in high school, right? So, you know, being a person of color, I wanted to be one of the few people that a name, names was announced for, you know, honor roll or something right. along those lines. Mm -hmm. And being one of a handful of those kids in yeah. high school, right, being one of them is, you know, was something that I strived for and that I achieved. And then now, um, looking on to what I want to achieve later on in life, being a great father is one of those one of those big things, right? Especially for people of color. That's, you know, like obviously for me, I don't have a father. Right. Like he's not he's not a um, big aspect of my life. So being able to put that onto my kids or being able to be there for my kids is one of the big things. Yeah. Uh, being a great husband is another thing, right? And obviously making sure I have a steady job and able to help them when it comes to schoolwork and do like those those little things right. as well. That that right there is what is for what's sure. motivating me. So. Go, go into class, something simple like that, you know, pay attention in, in lectures like that. That right there is, yeah. is what I'm I'm striving for. So um, using that stuff as motivation, I'm glad that I haven't really had to deal with any sort of incidents on campus, yeah. even in high school, too. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad that that hasn't happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just hoping to push it forward. Yeah. yeah. OK, I'm going to touch on that, actually. You brought, brought up you haven't had any incidents. Uh, do you think the, the color of your skin and probably because of the size you are or anything has an impact on why nobody bothers you. Because oh, I, sure. I know for me, sometimes I'm glad I look the way I look because nobody wants to right. come yeah. and talk to me, mm -hmm. right? Because I can have my own space and do what I need to do and people will stay away from me because they don't want to cause trouble because I look like that. Why? Do you guys feel the same way at times or... Is that just that's the me thing? No, no. 100%. Okay. I, I, there's, I mean, high school is one of those things where it's, right. mm -hmm. I'm scared of you. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm just walking around, walking around school, you know, wearing yeah. shorts like everyone else, wearing a sweater right. like everyone else, having a backpack like everyone else. I, I, I look like everyone else, but yeah. not entirely, right? Right. I act like everyone else, but right. because I look different, people Correct. think I'm going to act different. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. Right. And that's, yeah, and the, a lot of people won't, don't understand that. And that's, I think, the whole weaponizing of our skin, right? You know, uh, you, the whole thing with George Floyd and everything. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. you know, I always, I always say to people, or I shouldn't say always, but whenever this conversation comes up, um, how many people would have ran over and knocked that cop over if that was a dog that they were kneeling on yeah right a black man it seems seems like a dangerous thing so it's okay to do that mm. but if it was an animal right they there have been so many there were so many people that would have caused an uproar more of an uproar right then and there it was a big problem but i think a lot of people would have jumped in and probably even stopped it if that was someone's beloved dog not somebody's beloved son yeah so it was just interesting hearing you say, you know, going to school, nobody, nobody causes any trouble with you and everything. And yeah, I, that's one of the things I was fortunate. People have, uh, has, have asked me in the past, you get into a lot of fights. I'm like, no, I never did. You know, and I it was one of those things I reflected. I was like, yeah, people around me used to get into fights all the time. I'm like, how come I never did? And was, then I thought about it. I was like, oh, could have been this, could have been that, you know. I've been in certain situations where people are clutching their purses or, you know, shying away from me because I, I look the way I do. Hopefully I don't look that bad with these glasses on and I look a bit nerdy right now, but um, yeah, I've, I've had people that I've become friends with now that said, you know what, when I first saw you, I, you look like, you know, really tough and hardcore and intimidating. yeah, intimidating, that's it. And after meeting you, they're like, oh, He's just a regular dude. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's how I am. So, yeah, getting past that and like you had mentioned earlier, learning the history and un getting to understand people a bit better. And 
that's what I like about this month. It, it brings more conversation to light. Uh, but however, it should be something that people talk about throughout the year, right? And then, um, yeah, that's one of, like I said, we talked about it with my girls to try to have those little discussions here and there, try and make sure I understand, okay, what challenges are you guys facing? I'm try not to be too direct, but, you know, just open that dialogue, make sure that they're aware that the, they can come to dad and say, hey, dad, I'm having, I'm having this problem or... I just want to talk, just being able to have that dialogue. And, you know, you had mentioned just be that father, that father figure being available for them right. to, you know, and then that's another stereotype, you know, abandonment or, you know, non, non-available fathers, right? So don't want to be that person. And, you know, myself as well. My dad uh, wasn't around, I think left when I was about 14. He's still around. I'm, we chit chat once in a while, but you know, he wasn't there. I left when I was 14. Yeah, and, and it was weird. I never realized this until I was speaking with my mom about it. Came to Canada when I was 10. By 14, my dad was gone. And like, just, I got bullied from like, yeah, 10 till about 11 or so, you know, kids in my class. So it was a bit of, you know, I sounded different from people. Even though I knew I smart, I, you know, people challenged my intellect because I was different. Right. And because we look different, people will challenge us. And it's a matter of, you know, challenging that status quo or that belief in what we can achieve. Right. We're talking, we're just talking with uh, Darius and AJ earlier and we discussed that same thing. You know, want to challenge that st status quo. Uh, we feel like we have to represent ourselves in a certain way. And I think you guys touched on that as well. Any further comments on that or uh, with regards to challenging that, that uh, I guess that stereotype? Okay, well, for me, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, whenever I meet people, I never really discuss football or anything just in regards right. to football, right? For me, it was, it was a lot of, you know, after high school, I wanted to go and study this to right. then achieve this. Yeah. And I had nothing really to do with football. Yeah. A lot of times in class, people would ask each other questions and I had someone standing beside, sitting beside me, they wouldn't ask me like that same question. Like, they asked somebody else something and then asked right. me something that's a little, you know, dumbed down so maybe yeah. I can understand it better. Something, something, right. something like that. Um, I don't know, I just, being, being from, again, like I said, from the white communities, it's, it, was, it was kind of, it was hard to challenge my mindset when it came to Black History Month. And I think since coming to university and speaking to my mom, of course, during this month especially, mm -hmm. I'm starting to understand how I can, again, like I said earlier, you know, better myself when it comes to my history. Right. Um, and that's one of the things I'm going to for sure work on. And also as a team as well, um, I'm not sure if you're there for that meeting, Miles, but we're starting up a little group, kind of discuss what we can do as a team when it comes to Black History Month. Yeah. Like you said, it's not just a month thing, right? right? It's a yearly thing. Yeah. When it comes to what we can do, like one of my suggestions was, you know, promoting black businesses in the Guelph community. Right. Of course, Guelph That's as a, a whole, idea. again, predominantly white, which is fine. Yeah. Of course, I came here for a reason. It's not, that wasn't one of the, wasn't the big reason for me as right. why I didn't want to come, right? But again, helping those communities, whether it's whatever their background is, right? Helping them. Um, get to where they can, like get to where they want to be, help them succeed. It's one of the big things that we can that we can do to right. help um, our history. So yeah, yeah. yeah one of the okay. things I work on. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you guys are aware, um, friends of Griffin Football, we have a a BIPOC community uh, committee, which we're trying to do some of what you're mentioning, Isaiah. Well, well, have those conversations, provide a safe space if for any conversations, not just with black athletes, but the allies of um, of the community, really, and have those conversations to allow to uh, grow that understanding, as you mentioned. So uh, we think it's going to be, it would be great, uh, you know, at least now I get a bit closer to you guys. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys more often and building on that. Any other comments or feedback? I'm all good. Thank you. All yeah. good.
Oh, okay. You gonna grow out the locks or what? Uh, I don't. I don't think mom's He's gonna let trying. that happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, trust but... me, man. I I did that. My mom. My mom couldn't wouldn't speak to me for, yeah. for a while. Yeah. You know? It was already hard getting the twists. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just. I might have to leave it at this. Okay. Mm, yeah. yeah. So you see, as you can see, I got rid of mine. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's a long time ago. It's been 10, yeah, 12 years now since I cut mine. So mm -hmm. nice meeting you guys. Nice yeah. chit-chatting. We'll sure. have more of these Appreciate conversations it. for sure. Sure. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.